What's up, YouTubers? Jose Quinones, the CNC dude here. Today we're gonna play with this electromagnet that I got from Amazon, and the reason why <clears throat> I wanted to start playing with this one is because this is one we can acquire. If you recall, previously I did a, a project that uh, chip picker upper with one of these guys that I found locally, so that uh, that I don't know where we can find. I don't have a part number, I don't have anything. This one you can buy on Amazon, and I'm gonna put an associates link below in case you're interested it's something similar it's smaller as you can see let me put this one besides so much smaller uh, but you know it claims that it can do 600 pounds of force which is incredible uh, it will also come with this metal slug this is important i'm going to show you why and then some hardware which we don't need so Let's open this up and see how it is wired inside. There is one screw down here and it says warranty void if seal is broken. Oh no! What am I, what am I about to do? So here we go, an awesome electromagnet. I see there's only two wires, which is uh, a little bit easier to handle than the one that I had been using before, which had four wires. If you recall from my previous video, there are two electromagnets in here. One goes from black to black, the other one goes from white to white. This makes it a little bit more complicated because you have to watch it, how you uh, wire these guys up. If you wire them backwards, it, the, the electromagnetic field actually collapses. But in here we only have one winding, so this is as simple as it can get. And um, uh, there, is, there are no electronics, so I have to imagine all you do is put a voltage and it goes. Okay, YouTubers, we're going to be working from inside the lab today, as there are plenty of measurements that I want to take. Also, we're going to be looking at the scope to see how this, uh, this puppy behaves. I'm going to be using the PAC5526 reference design, so we can regulate the current and look at different aspects. Of the magnetics involved. All right, so I have my electromagnet and I have already added the leads. So we're gonna measure a few things. First thing I'm gonna measure is the resistance because of course this inductor is made of a huge wire. So there's gonna be some resistance and I'm measure, measuring 29, roughly 20, 28.6 ohms, so roughly 29 ohms. That's how much resistance the inductor has. Now, the other thing that you may want to measure is the inductance. The, uh, for this, I'm going to use this LCR. I just acquired this a few weeks ago. It's been pretty good. If you're interested in that kind of uh, measurement, I'll have a link below so you can get yourself an awesome LCR. And uh, in this case, I'm going to be measuring at 100 kilohertz. And it says 3.37. Let's see if we can see that. 3.76 millihenries. All right. Now we're going to power this up. And for that, I'm going to... Uh, connected to the power supply and we're just gonna see what happens now there this guy didn't come with any electronics so truly all you all you do is apply 12 volts and it goes the other one that i showed in my previous video did have some electronics um but that was uh the electronics weren't doing much let me tell you it was just a, a simple fed okay so now i'm increasing the voltage and i'm gonna go to 12 volts because that is the rating on this uh inductor and that takes me to 12 volts, roughly 400 milliamps. And of course, you know, you're not gonna feel anything, but I have a nail here. You see, it is, it is stuck to it. However, I can release it. That's one of the first uh, in, intriguing aspect is that I can release the magnet. However, if I were to do this, and I gotta be careful with this one, Yeah, I'm not pulling that guy up. Now, I can slide it. That's kind of easier. But, man, there is no way I'm going to be pulling this guy out of here. <clears throat> nope. So why it's so much easier to remove the nail than it is to remove the bar? The simple answer is mass. They are both equally ferromagnetic which means that they're both going to be attracted by magnetic fields. However, the amount of mass on the nail is much smaller than on the bar. You have to imagine that the electromagnet 
has an infinite or seemingly infinite number of flux lines trying to grab onto ferromagnetic materials. They resemble rubber bands. So if I have one rubber band, I can easily stretch my fingers apart. However, if now I have a way larger number of rubber bands, it is much harder for me to spread my fingers apart because I have to fight way much more rubber bands. The nail can catch so many flux lines, whereas the bar can catch way much more. And that is why it is so much easier for me to pull the nail from the electromagnet than the bar from the exact same electromagnet with the same exact same magnetic field. Another curious aspect that we can study while looking at this electromagnet is that when I apply 12.2 volts, I am getting 430 milliamps. This is the current in amps voltage in volts. If you were to divide those two numbers, that is the voltage divided by the current, we are supposed to get the resistance. So that is the result of that, uh, of that division, 28.37. If you recall, that is basically the resistance for this electromagnet. And the reason why what we're seeing here is the resistance is because we're applying a DC current, which is giving us an static magnetic field. But for all practical purposes, this inductor is fully saturated. So it's no longer behaving like an inductor. The other aspect that we can consider here is what is the power that is going into the system. And for that, instead of dividing voltage by current, we multiply voltage by current, and that gives us the watts. And if you were to multiply those two numbers in there, you're gonna get five point, basically 5.25 watts, okay? So 5.25 watts is all that is required to get this bar, this steel bar, perfectly attracted to the point where I cannot even move it. And according to the, uh, to the vendor, it has up to 600 pounds worth of pull. So I would need to apply a force up equal to 600 pounds to be able to release it. That's what they say. I don't know if that's true, but I want to measure that. So that's, that's, that's coming up. Now, let me show you a few things that are cool, cool to watch. The magnet is released. So now there is no force no attraction so let's go back 12 volts and now check out i have this little one in here i'm gonna put a, another associate link in case you want to play with your kids and show them about the fascinating world of magnetism and notice what happens with the wand it is following the magnetic field so that tells us that the center is north pole and uh I don't think there is a lot of a lot of field in here, maybe a little bit of north, but not a whole lot. And if I were to flip this on the back, really not a lot. You see a little bit, but I don't I don't feel a lot of strength. Uh, it is not like when I put it on the top where the magnetic field is huge. I mean, this thing is literally pulling on my hand right now. I can feel the one It's not bending, but I can feel uh, the force. Okay. Now, if I were to to put this in here, nothing. No magnetic field on the back. So only on the front. And you know, I'm gonna be very careful here because this guy's gonna get pulled. Bam! It's not a lot of force to pull it in. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't get slammed, but I tell you. I mean, I, I guess I can slide it. But once it's there, let me see if I can pull it out. Whoa, okay. You know what? That's because it was this side that is ragged. But if I were to do it on this side, you want to pinch your fingers, man. I cannot move it. Whoa, buddy. Yeah, this, this is there. Maybe if I go like this. Nope, I cannot move it. Let's see if there is a little bit of, I can still sense the magnetic field. It is there. Cool stuff. Now let me show you something else. I have in here what is called magnetic paper. It allows you to see the magnetic fields. So if I put it on top, in here, uh, I don't think there is a lot of magnetic field that we can see. 
let me remove this guy. All right, so now I'm, I only have the burr magnet and when I put this guy on top, we can see the lines of magnetic field. That's basically the magnetic field changing the paper. You see that? Okay, so now we're gonna look on the scope what happens when I increase the voltage on the power supply. So I'm going to increase the power supply just like we did before, and you're gonna see that the yellow is gonna go up. Let me change the resolution so you see more action. So let's put, um, fine. Let's, let's go to two volts, and uh, uh, I'll put it here. But notice that already we have something like almost four volts. We have 3.3 actually. The current went up, and, and this is a straight line because the power supply is basically a DC voltage source. So as I increase the voltage, look at the yellow go up. I'm gonna lo be looking at the power supply. I don't wanna go past 12 volts. Notice that the yellow line goes up and the green line goes up with it. What that tells me is that the inductor is basically saturated because we have a DC current, which is to be expected because we're applying a DC voltage. So of course you're gonna get a DC current and roughly we see 384 millivolts, which matches what the uh, power supply is reporting, 390 millivolts uh, because the, you know, the, um, I'm sorry, 390 milliamps because the power supply only has two decimal spaces on the uh, scale. All right, so this is when you apply a DC voltage, like what you're going to apply when you are locking the door with one of these units. And right now this guy is magnetized and I cannot move it. That is basically its maximum power. But now I'm gonna do something different. I have connected my PAC5526 reference design. And now what I can do when I move the potentiometer, just like you saw on that other video, is that I can generate a PWM signal, which is gonna cause the current into the winding to be regulated. Now I am not controlling the duty cycle with the potentiometer. This is not a potentiometer to PWM. It's basically a potentiometer to current and the current regulates uh, the duty cycle. Okay, so that's basically how it's working. And that's how I can tell the system to go up in current. There was a little bit of a jump in there. I'm not sure why, but I could hear it. I'm just basically increasing the command with the potentiometer and that's how the current goes up and then I can go down and notice that what is happening here as I zoom in on that edge of the duty cycle this is basically when we enable the output and you can see this big jumping here and uh, then it basically uh, goes into the regulation stage where basically we are regulating the current uh, you know this is a, I believe this is a 150 kilohertz signal so it is basically regulating the current into the winding and what i can do is increase and decrease the current depending on the command from the potentiometer well youtubers i must apologize my goal was to be able to perform the experiment in which we try to see what kind of force this electromagnet can exert on the bar they claim, they claim 600 pounds. I really wanted to see that. And my goal is to carry on with that experiment, but that's gonna have to be a different video as this video is already too long. And today is my last day of holiday vacation. So I gotta go back to work tomorrow. But just to give you a little idea of what I have in mind, I'm gonna use this scale that can measure up to 600 pounds worth of weight or force. And the idea is to uh, plug this guy in and then I'm gonna use a lever mechanism so I'll be able to put some weight on the other side. Hopefully I'll be able to get a force that I can measure with the scale and that will tell us whether this guy can do the 600 pounds that they claim. Now I'm gonna do that at three currents, 200 milliamps, 300 milliamps and 400 milliamps. So of course I do not expect 600 pounds of force with anything less than 400 milliamps which is the rated uh, voltage or, or power. Um, so we'll see though, we'll see what kind of uh, force the electromagnetic cancer at the different currents and that will tell us what is the rate of uh, pounds force uh, per amp. Okay, well, it's gonna have to be a different video, so I apologize for that. 
I do want to thank you for tuning into my YouTube channel, and I'm going to see you on the next one, which hopefully has to do with how strong this guy is. Have a good one.